Whenever you see headlines demonising red meat, they refer to either a link or an association. And when you see these words, you know that the research was observational, and therefore the conclusions drawn are almost certainly meaningless. Another issue is that much of the observational research on nutrition is performed using self-reported food frequency questionnaires. As if asking someone how many eggs they consumed in the previous 12 months could be in any way reliable. Bear in mind that most people struggle to remember what they've had for breakfast. And just in case the unreliability of food frequency questionnaires doesn't confound findings enough, researchers often conflate things like pizzas, hot dogs and hamburgers with red meat. And you don't need an overpriced research degree to know that this kind of conflation is not scientifically valid. People eating hamburgers are probably also having a side of Coke and fries. This is called confounding, and it's impossible to control adequately. Furthermore, how should you categorise this pizza with ham and pineapple? Putting aside the fact that they're probably a bad person, <laughs> does it get classed as a fruit or a vegetable or a meat? We also have something called healthy user bias, where non-meat eaters are more likely to engage in healthy behaviours. So when we're constantly bombarded with messaging telling us that red meat is bad, it's individuals who care about their health who are most likely to limit their red meat intake. So it ends up that the people who eat less meat are also more likely to diligently exercise, buy organic foods, and sleep eight hours every night. So instead of observational research, we should seek out randomised controlled trials, shown here in yellow. And unlike observational studies, these can control for the effects of confounders. In a randomised controlled trial, subjects, along with all of their confounding variables, are randomly allocated to one of two groups. And with enough numbers, this random allocation means that the confounding variables are evenly distributed and therefore don't affect the study results. This research design is considered gold standard, and unlike observational studies, randomised controlled trials can show causation. In effect, randomised controlled trials trump observational research, hands down. As an aside, you might be wondering, what is at the very top of the pyramid? Well, systematic reviews are when researchers collate all the available evidence using unbiased search criteria. The problem is that even when well performed, a systematic review can only be as good as the quality of included studies. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. So in addition to study design, research can often be compromised by using poor outcome measures. And this is particularly common in studies that seem to promote vegan diets. This often includes surrogate markers which serve as proxies for meaningful clinical outcomes. And the use of proxies or surrogate markers is unfortunately rife. The utility of some outcome measures is obvious. Did you die? It's hard to argue that this is neither meaningful nor relevant. And it's also very hard to fudge. What about LDL cholesterol, though? A common surrogate marker used in nutritional research and assumed to associate with the chance of dying except the best research we have suggests this association doesn't exist. The overwhelming finding of this systematic review of 19 cohort studies with more than 68,000 participants was that the higher the LDL level, the less chance of dying. There is no credible evidence to the contrary. Use of LDL as a surrogate marker, while being common in nutritional research, is indefensible. 